Yo, what is going on everyone in the XRP community? Hope you guys are having yourselves a fantastic day today as usual. Got a couple of videos to upload today. Got a lot of headlines, a lot of stuff going on as usual in the XRP community. This is why you don't have YouTubers from other, you know, cryptocurrency communities making videos constantly every single day because there's just simply not as uh, like not near as enough information as the XRP ledger. Like every single day we got things coming out. And like a few minutes before I started recording this video, XRP is strongly pushing on the 15 minute chart, battling this overhead resistance of 0.343. And as you can see right there, that is a gap market moves straight down again, another gap right here, market moving straight down. And what happens? See, you could look at this chart. Like, you know, when it just looked like this and then you'd be like, oh my God, XRP is dumping. But what we see here is we got big gap needs to be filled. Big gap here needs to be filled. What does the XRP market do? Boom. Fills the first one, pulls back, fills the second one. Gaps are where liquidity is waiting. That is where the market is going to move. The market's always going to move where it can find liquidity. Okay, let's go over to the four hour chart here. XRP is absolutely just bursting over this previous consolidation level we had a very very strong zone here at like 33 and a half cents okay and it is like you know it, it it's really fascinating what's happening here because it, it got rejected off that level and dumped because of bitcoin you know broke this local support trend line here and then immediately just said nope screw you guys um and just completely wrecked the sellers here and is going for a bigger break which is going to make the Daily charts start looking pretty good here. Looks like we've got a little double bottom playing out on the daily. And oh my God, guys, I'm just telling you, we got big gaps, big gaps. Do expect near dollar XRP prices in the next few weeks here. It does look like on the XRP daily chart, it is priming itself for a breakout. I mean, you want to get a little, you know, little scuffed trend line right there. Local resistance zone right here which used to be old support back there. And it looks like XRP is going to start kind of going for one of these, break out of the consolidation because nothing, except for a rug pull scam crypto, uh, nothing can go sideways forever. And I think XRP is going to make a move and start filling some gaps here. Because I know everyone's getting super down and you know pouting and sad that the prices are going down, but you got to realize market's always going to move in waves. Whatever goes up, comes down. Whatever goes down, comes up. That's just the way it goes. Got to keep your emotions solid. First piece of information today, guys, this comes from the general counsel at Ripple. With over 35 years of legal experience with expertise in regulatory affairs and complex litigation. So the SEC kind of posts a uh, little article today. Uh, Kennedy and crypto from Chair Gary Gensler. Like, thank you. It's going to be back with SEC Speaks, right? And then Stuart Aldroti quotes this saying another famous quote from Joseph Kennedy because what they're doing here with the SEC is like citing this you know Joseph Kennedy statements another famous quote from Joseph Kennedy I wanted power I thought money would give me power and so I made money only to discover that it was politics not money that really gave a man power but honestly in my opinion dude the man that seeks power in the end is just the loser man life's not about power or politics life's about just freedom and enjoying the time you got, man. Make no mistake, this is a political power grab. It's not the law, and it's not a good policy, and it's at your expense. So we do have the SEC yet again, or no, Ripple yet again, uh, directly targeting the SEC with the latest statement from Gary Gensler. So let's let's, let's read through what uh, you know, Fishboy Gensler has to say here. So <clears throat> thank you. It's going to be practicing with SEC speaks. Uh, blah blah blah. A bunch of fluff. So Joseph Kennedy, the first chairman of the SEC, had a saying, no honest business need fear the SEC. Oh my God, the irony here. The irony here, and, and Gary Gensler is laying down the foundation for the irony for us. No honest business need fear the SEC. Well, what honest business did they go after and cause a multi-billion dollar market cap loss in for going after an honest business? In the depths of the Great Depression, Congress and President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, known for a slightly more famous quotation about fear, enacted the first federal securities laws. 
Um, I'm trying to like not look read all the fluff here like this stuff. This is a typical like political article fluff looking for really what Gary Gensler is saying here. So Congress knew, however, that their job wasn't done. The following year, they passed the Securities Exchange Act 1934. Uh, over the generations, Congress has refined and amended these key statutes, uh, adding, uh, amongst other things, oversight of clearing agencies and over-the-counter market for securities. Crypto tokens, okay. Of the nearly 10,000 tokens in the cryptocurrency market, Gary Gensler, you kind of missed the boat on that one. Um, I know my screen is blocking it off right now, but if I adjust my OBS real quick, you can see right there, cryptos, uh, 20 thousand nine hundred so gary gensler clearly not keeping up to date on his information because twenty thousand tokens uh, i believe vast the vast majority are securities okay well these are decentralized platforms for the most part and uh a lot of these aren't even made in the united states these are abroad so basically what they're thinking about some of these cryptocurrency tokens it doesn't even really apply to them because essentially like you got a lot of tokens just created out of like singapore and you know korea and japan it's like okay well if the, U, if the United States Securities and Exchange Commission thinks they're securities, I mean, what are you going to do about it? It's not in your country. But that's where Ripple and XRP are different because you got Ripple over in Silicon Valley. and But that's the thing, though, is, is Ripple did state that they would leave the U.S. if they need be. If, if they want to, you know, try so hard at stifling innovation, Ripple, they did say they could just leave. They've got offices and headquarters all over the world, man. Okay, so some tokens may not meet the definition of a security, what I'll call non-crypto non-security token. Okay, so now, so this is where like I, I really get pissed off with the SEC because they just start making shit up. First of all, like no one ever gave them jurisdiction over the cryptocurrency market. That's the first one. Second one, they keep coming up with their own little terms and like magically inventing their 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 own little definitions here. I mean, okay. Some tokens may not meet the definition of a security, what I'll call crypto non-security tokens. Uh, like, okay, and what's your point? Like, what's your point with that? Because you remember the SEC, the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit? Because the SEC has backtracked so many damn times about the Hinman speech that they literally tried to call the Hinman speech a twilight zone in between personal opinion and agency regulation? You know, because like what pisses off the judge the most in the lawsuit with Ripple versus the SEC is that they keep flip-flopping. They keep backtracking. And when it's convenient for them, they will reference the him and speech as agency guidance. When it's convenient for them, they'll switch it over to uh, its personal opinion. But then the latest thing was they literally tried to call the SEC tried to say that him and speech was neither personal opinion or agency guidance. It was some sort of twilight zone in the middle. This is what I don't like about the SEC. They're coming up with these imaginary things that they try to just enact into law and just say is correct. Okay? So what do I think a majority... Well, so why do I think a majority of crypto tokens are securities? As Justice Thurgood Marshall put it in describing the scope of securities laws, Congress paints the definition of a security with a broad brush. He further stated Congress' purpose... In enacting these securities laws was to regulate investments in whatever form they are made and by whatever name they are called. In general, the investing public is buying or selling crypto security tokens because they're expecting profits derived from the efforts of others in common expertise. My predecessor, Jay Clayton, who sued Ripple on his last hours in office, suspicious, yeah, yeah, not suspicious, not suspicious at all, filing a multi like filing a lawsuit against a billion dollar Silicon Valley tech startup on the last few hours of you being in office. Yeah, there's uh, there's someone someone stuff in his pockets over there. And I will reiterate it. Without prejudging any one token, most crypto tokens are investment contracts under the Howey test. Okay, so we're really going to take something from the 1930s and apply it to a freaking future like the new future generation of decentralized currency. This is what pisses me off. Is like we're taking, and this is the thing with the the recent Congress SEC hearing that Gary Gensler had no intent to show up to and did not show up to. He sent someone that was much lower than him so they could pull the oh I can't answer that card. But you're really gonna take something from 90 years ago, and try to apply that to the advanced technology of currency we have today. That is what the bullshit is. So basically. Anything else Gary Gensler is saying, 
I do not care. I cannot wait for him to resign and be out of office. Next one here, guys, from Blockchain Backer, pretty legendary uh, technical analysis in the XRP community. So new four-year low for the Bitcoin dominance. We talked about this range for a long time, and it's finally doing it. So the Bitcoin dominance chart, what you're seeing is you're not seeing like price. You're seeing Bitcoin's total. So Bitcoin's market cap measured as a total of a percentage of the total cryptocurrency market cap. And as you can see, every time Bitcoin comes down to this dominance level, it ends up going for the rally and starts gaining strength of the market and price starts pumping. So I'm not sure exactly what BC backers insinuating here. Um, saying he like you know we talked about this range for a long time it's finally doing it I don't know what he's expecting to happen but I mean look every time it comes down to this level it ends up bouncing tremendously so maybe we see some sort of Bitcoin relief rally coming uh, in the near future maybe it breaks below maybe Bitcoin you know sets record lows for majority dominance over the market and you see the altcoins start to take control but um, you know what history is telling us is that every time it's coming down here it rallies from 40% to about 50%, and it kept doing that. Did it again here, again here, and then, you know, gambler's fallacy would say, okay, yeah, well, oh, it's, it's got to do it here again, but, you know, might not be the case. So we'll just see there. Bitcoin dominance starts booming like crazy. Then, hey, Bitcoin price starts booming, starts carrying the altcoin market. Bitcoin market dominance starts crashing and crashing and crashing. You could see just the, you know, the rise of the altcoins. Because we, like, I do respect Bitcoin. It was the first coin ever created. Like, absolute respect. But, like, that's literally just 1.0 crypto. It's crypto 1.0. We're talking about the crypto 3.0 here. Okay. Last one for today, guys. Fed Chair Powell. Stable coins can play a role in our financial system. Right at the same time, we got the Federal Reserve discovering CBDCs using the Fed now system. And then it's Volante's Fed now, who's a confirmed XRP user. You guys see the point here. Guys, Fed Chair Powell, stable coins can play a role in our financial system. We'll see about that. We'll see about that. The one thing I really fear is um, stable coin depegging. I think one day, I think one day the, the tether bubble will burst. I, I am really dreading that day happening, but tether just holds so much liquidity for the whole cryptocurrency market dude if there was ever i mean we already know that the tether is not backed one-to-one -one with real u.s dollars like that's already confirmed it's not fully backed one-to-one -one. and that's why honestly biggest fear for the cryptocurrency space is like like a severe you know number one stable coin of the market just crashes depegs whatever other financial destruction could happen with the company behind it or with the liquidity with it who knows what could happen but Another interesting theory is that, okay, well, if Tether is crashing, the only thing you can really sell Tether for is other cryptocurrency. So that's the other side of it is like, okay, yeah, if there's like a big Tether doomsday, I mean, people are going to be cashing out of Tether and other cryptocurrencies. You could see a bull run spark by Tether crashing. The other side of it is, oh, no, people are just going to sell Tether for dollars on the exchanges. I mean, yeah, you could do that, but majority of Tether's liquidity is sitting in other cryptocurrencies. So if we did see the demise of Tether, because I, I do think Tether is fraudulent. I do think it is like a fraudulent stable coin. But it is holding majority of liquidity in this market right now. If that were to burst and everyone, there is a run on Tether and people are just selling as much Tether as they can, you're basically going to be, to sell Tether, you would have to buy other cryptocurrencies. So that's something to think about. Thank you guys for the video today. I would appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.